What's up, Coyotes? Welcome back to another CMS TV. Today we have a news feature on e-bike safety and some delicious food options. I'm Miles. I'm Lucas. And CMS, CMS TV, TV starts, starts now. now. Wow, that was a fantastic intro. They get better every single time. Yeah, definitely. To start off our show, we have a DIY boba tutorial with Oliver. Let's check it out. Hello and welcome to Ollie's Kitchen. Today, we're going to be making some homemade boba. And without further ado, let's get into it. You're going to start off with a pre-boiled one-third cup water and one-fourth cup brown sugar. And then you're going to add half of three fourth cup of tapioca flour into the bowl and stir until it gets this nice sticky density. Then you're going to add the rest of the three fourths tapioca flour and then you're going to stir until it gets this nice doughy consistency. Then you're going to add dough onto a nice flat grippy board where you can knead the dough. And you're going to knead it until it starts to look like this. And then you're going to cut the dough into four different pieces. Which you will then roll until they start to look really long just like this. Then you're going to cut each one to around the length of a fingernail. Then you're going to roll them up into little balls so you can put them in a bowl with a little bit of tapioca flour and you can dust them off. Then you're going to get the little balls and you're going to put them into boiling water. Then, once they're in, you're going to want to separate them by stirring them in the pot. And once they look like this, you're going to turn the heat off and you're going to let them sit. And while that's resting, you're going to boil one cup of water and one cup of brown sugar to get the syrup, which you're going to pour into a bowl. Then you're going to get your boba and you're going to drain all the extra water out. Then you're going to add it to the syrup. Then to make the tea, you add four tea bags, wait till it boils, and then take it off the heat. Now it's time for assembly. You're gonna get some ice, some boba balls, and you're gonna add as much tea as you want into the cup. And then once you're finished with that, you're gonna get some half and half, and you're gonna pour three scoops of it into the cup. And there you have it, your own homemade boba, which you can make by yourself or with your friends. Wow, that was a fantastic story by Ollie. Yeah, for sure. A lunchtime basketball tournament will start on March 20th and run through the week. Students may sign up with a minimum of three people on a team and up to six people total. Teams may not be altered after you've signed up. Students may not be signed up for more than one team. Remember that the ASB sticker holds your first dibs at signups. Now, let's learn some history. Hey Miles, do you know how St. Patrick's Day was originally celebrated? No, do you? Me neither, but we're going to find out because Jasmine, Rebecca, Jasmine and Rebecca brought us a story to tell us about St. Patrick's Day. Let's check it out. St. Patrick's Day is celebrated occasionally on March 17th, the anniversary of the passing of St. Patrick in the 5th century. St. Patrick's Day is the Irish have observed as a religious holiday for over a thousand years. Irish families would traditionally attend church in the morning and then later in the afternoon. They would celebrate by dancing and having drinks along with their traditional meal, Irish bacon and cabbage. The first ever St. Patrick's Day was not celebrated in Ireland but in America. It was celebrated with a St. Patrick's parade that took place on March 17, 1601. A 40 clover, also known as a shamrock, was ancient Ireland plant that symbolized the rebirth of spring and later turned into the symbol we know now, the symbol of luck. Now with lots of luck, I'm saying a back to the anchors and I hope you have a lucky weekend. Wow, 
wow, I didn't know that much about the history of St. Patrick's Day. Me either. Now, some of you may have noticed that many of our broadcasting students haven't been at school these past couple days. That's because they're actually in Long Beach competing in a film competition called STN. Now, we have Mr. Lyon in the studio to tell us more. Hey, Coyote, sitting in the studio with Mr. Lyon to share with us a little bit more about STN. Yeah, so STN stands for uh, Student Television Network, and it's a national competition amongst high school and middle schools. Um, and this year, we're competing up in Long Beach, so we're taking a crew of about 20 students um, from our broadcast class, and we're heading up actually two days ago. <laughs> and then, um, what will Steam STV be doing at STN? So yeah, we have a series of contests that we're entered in. So we have different groups that will be competing in these specific contests. Um, some of the contests are uh, commercial or movie trailer, um, but at the end of the week, the, the contest will be judged, and um, the judges will hopefully give us the W. And uh, so yeah, we're looking forward to going. Thanks, Mr. Line, and best of luck to our broadcasting team and STN. For sure. Next up, we have another local announcement. Coyote Cavern Production presents Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Come out on Thursday, March 23rd through Sunday, March 26th. Tickets and times are in the school office. Make sure to check it out. Next up, we have an update for you on what has changed since the e-bike state of emergency. Hey Coyotes, I'm here in front of our school's bike rack. In the past couple years, there have been dramatic increases in e-bike crashes. Since then, the City of Carlsbad Council have declared a city-wide state of emergency, refreshing many rules and regulations. This has affected both our school and our communities. Let's learn a little more. But before we talk about all that, we have to talk about the root of the problem, the dramatic increase in e-bikes everywhere. The sheer number of bikes, skateboards, and scooters on campus have grown immensely. Before COVID, we, we were able to fit all of our bikes in a single bike rack. And today, as any student can see, we have many more vehicles on campus than we actually have space to lock them up. This increase has caused the city to try and work with our schools to help educate our students. In working with the city, there's a few things that we're doing. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had uh, the San Diego Coalition for Bike Safety out to give a, give a talk to students about bike safety. That was through the city. Also, our school has been working with our police department to keep our students safe. In partnership with the police department, uh, we've agreed to hold bikes, scooters, and skateboards on campus if students bring them to campus and they're not wearing a helmet. The city is doing more outside of schools, including implementing many new regulations and laws. These can be found online on the city's website. Before we go, we ask Dr. Ecker if he has any last words. I have kids myself, and I, and I care a lot about the well-being of our, of our students here. There's a lot of bikes and a lot of scooters and skateboards uh, leaving campus, and I would just ask that we slow down uh, and make sure that you're taking care of yourself. One bad uh, choice or one... Um, you know, unfortunate incident could really change someone's life forever. I'm Mac reporting with Caden Forrest for CMS TV, reminding you to stay safe. Thanks for the update. Stay safe, Coyotes. Next up, we have a treat for you, an ice cream story. Lucas, Connor, and I went down to Cold Stone to grab an interview. Let's check it out. Hey, Coyotes. Today, we went down to Cold Stone in the village to check it out. I'd say the most popular ice cream flavor is the most basic one, which would be birthday cake batter. The birthday cake flavored one? Yep. When was Cold Stone established? I actually have no idea, but I know that this place has been up for like more than 20 years. As a matter of fact, in 1988, a couple named Donald and Susan were in the town of Tempe, Arizona when they built what we now know as Cold Stone. So we are open every day on weekends being from 9 to 9 p.m. And then weekdays also being from 9 to 9 p.m. But during the summer, we close at 10. Cold Stone has a variety of treats ranging from ice cream to cakes to Oreos that will be sure to satisfy your sweet tooth. I'd say, well, I'm pretty classy, so I really like coffee, but I'll put in brownie, Oreos, fudge, and chocolate shavings. That's my favorite combination. This is Connor, Lucas, and Miles. 
reporting from Coldstone, sending it back to the anchors. Yummy yummy, in my tummy. Wow, what a story. Yeah, for sure. Don't forget to come out and support the girls' basketball team. See posters in the hallways for the dates and times. Well, Coyotes, that's it. Hope you enjoyed, and have a great weekend. Bye! Bye. Lunchtime basketball. It's a long sentence. Students may not be signed up for more than one team. Remember that the ASB sticker holds your first dibs at sign ups. Oh, oh, oh. There's a. Wait, why did you have to go like that? Yeah. <laughs> chitty Chitty Bang Bang, is that actually the name? Coyote Cavern Production presents Chitty Chitty What? <laughs> <laughs>